hello. So as you can see, we're playing some Kerbal Space Program. Um, I'm going to show you a space station and booster that I made. And, uh, basically, this is a very heavy lifting booster. It's a way to get very large, heavy things into orbit and potentially beyond. So um, basically, what we have here is we've got a configuration with the center booster. So, uh, let's back up and show you. Two fuel tanks along each. Um, we're using the uh, stage decouplers that have the extra distance so they don't they strike the uh, main booster when they separate off. And we're using staging here where we've got seven total engines and they're divided up into four stages. So uh, we're using the fuel lines to pipe the fuel from uh, each set of tanks one at a time. So these will come off in pairs. So as we get part way up, the first tanks, these two uh, side tanks will empty first and they'll decouple, uh, shedding that weight. And then the second set of tanks will empty and decouple, shedding that weight. And it'll knock down the engine count each time, but that's going to be okay because they were making up for it in weight and allows us to achieve a much better delta V uh, throughout the, the length of the mission uh, using this sort of staging scheme. So we go overboard on the structural stuff. We, we can't we can't have too much <laughs> um, structural reinforcement on this because uh, the weight of these upper fuel tanks and especially with the module on top is so great that it can actually um, break Shear here at the midpoints between the tanks, uh, and it'll explode on the launch pad. So make sure you have lots and lots of uh, structural reinforcement uh, for your entire craft. Uh, another thing to note here is that we have uh, two booster separators: an upper and a lower one. The tanks are only connected really to the upper one, uh, and then the lower tanks are connected to the upper tanks. The lower one will help give a little bit of uh, push, though, to keep push it away. And also we're using these uh, solid fuel separator stages and we're just pointing them towards the middle here from the outer corners and down here because we don't really care if we damage the, the bottom of the, the tank or the engine. So that'll give it a little bit of extra boost to pull it away from the main craft so it doesn't uh, damage the main stage as they separate. Uh, one thing to note here is I do have a standard engine here um, as a final stage connected to the craft. Um, I'm planning on actually changing that out at some point for a, a nuclear or atomic rocket motor. Um, at, at this point, we're just going to use it for uh, a station in orbit, so we only need some basic ability later. Um, I'm planning on actually sending this to other planets, and to do that, we're going to use a, an atomic motor because it has um, a much better uh, specific impulse than the other motors which allows it to go farther with less fuel. Now, interestingly, uh, I'm using, uh, what do you call these things again? I the Clamplotron Juniors uh, right here to hold on these fuel tanks. So these extra fuel tanks can be replaced and reloaded in orbit, and they can be replaced with larger tanks in orbit. Uh, and they can even be replaced with tanks with extra boosters in orbit. So once it goes up there, uh, we're using the fuel coupling line to connect it to the main tank here. And you can put a main engine here to, to drive the your spaceship. Uh, like I said, I've been recommending it, the atomic motor. You might need to use extra atomic motors if you want to achieve escape velocity, but again, you can, you can attach those to fuel tanks and just plug them right in here. And uh, so it's got a total of eight ports here where you can attach extra. Uh, extra motors and uh, extra fuel tanks. And uh, you can detach and reattach and re refuel them in orbit as necessary. We've got uh, lots of solar panels, a lot of structural stuff here. And the higher you can see we've got four, um, four supply canisters basically. You can store a crew in these, uh, you've got a main crew module. Basically, it's all the mechanics that they're able to, to travel between the modules. And, uh, let's see. What else? So we've got regular docking ports on the top and the signs, which allow extra craft to attach to it as necessary. Uh, there's also a docking port up here 
Uh, once I eject, you know, it's cool. Got uh, a lot of batteries on it. Got uh, uh, the large solar panels. And make sure you have a lot of RCS fuel. Um, to put the RCS boosters the furthest out from uh, this uh, the, the moment, uh, so that you have the most, the, the highest amount of torque. Because you want to have uh, as far away from the center of gravity as possible. Which is, uh, you have more torque than to, to turn the station. I'm forgetting anything. Lots of lights, just because I like lights. It's a pretty, pretty basic setup. I mean, overall, as far as the station, is something really fancy. We're going to use MechJeb today to help with the ascent. Uh, even if you don't use him in the ascent, I recommend getting him because you get this vessel information. You don't even have to attach him to your vessel. Just like throw him on the side with a builder area, and it'll give you this information. You can see that we have. Um, We've got delta Vs and uh, thrust weight ratios calculated. So I don't know why this isn't working right now. It was working earlier uh, for the additional stages, but I guess it's I guess it got confused when I added the uh, uh, the solid fuel separator boosters here. That's probably what this is. But it used to show actual staging uh, thrust thrust weight ratio and delta V for uh, all your stages. That's really useful for determining. If your rocket's going to fly, at how far you can go with it. So that that basically sums this up. So uh, we have the the Clamp Trent Juniors on the side here again, in case I want to attach something like fuel or supply, power, whatever. Uh, Non-manned modules on the sides. Just a lot of expansion ports. So once I can afford it, I can do all kinds of things with it. And, uh, we're going to get in orbit. So let's go to the pad. This is launch take two. Uh, I don't know what happened exactly, but somehow these uh, docking clamps got moved to the stage below five, so they didn't fire right away. Um, I did test this once before and it worked, so I'm not sure when it got changed, um, but it did. So we're going to give this a second try here. Uh, we're going to use MechaJab for the ascent. Um, we're going to do that. It's just going to make it easier. Uh, less, less, mine, less hassle getting it into orbit uh, and circular. So what we're going to do here is I want to show you that we, we actually have MechJeb set to 80% uh, turn rate and to start altitude at 20 kilometers because we don't want the turn to start in uh, dense atmosphere because we've got a lot of uh, you know, weight at the top, a lot of drag, and we don't want to try and maneuver this uh, close to the ground. So, uh, and so already, make sure to throttle up before we release the clamps. Engage Mac Jab and three, two, one. So it's, it's actually pretty stable. It's a substantial thrust. Mac Jab's going to control the floor of the floor, so you see that we can start to open the wings on the south of the coast, so we have to do it for a while, but not until we stop this launch.
this year. So I'm going to use our RC booster, which does a good state, which is nice. Um, because they work with it as Forces that are going to get set by breaking it. Altitude, we're going to drift up to our final altitude and it again. I don't know, I would have wanted to drop this by now, but it's a little bit late now. Um, <laughs> no, actually, let's disengage my jab. Let's see if we can drop this down just enough to drop off our fuel canister. Turn our RCS back on. Do a retrograde run to bring our periapsis down to the surface level. Now, if we want to actually achieve escape velocity and uh, go to or go to the moon or something with this, or achieve escape velocity with another planet, we'd want to keep that main booster with us as long as we can. Today, I'm just going to slow burn things down. If we get it below, debris doesn't seem to be affected by atmosphere the same way the module is, so we want to get it to the actual surface before we release it because we don't want to risk it looping through the atmosphere and coming back up and getting something. So, alright, so we're going to drop it now. We're actually going to initiate a turn before we drop because we want to get behind us before we accelerate the other way. And if we drop at any point, the inertia will spin it off away from us. Like so. Alright, we're on the final stage. Smack jab here to circularize the orbit. In fact, I think I'm going to do that. Circularize it. Not even in kilometers. Mm -hmm. 
all the boosters are firing in space, he shouldn't need the uh, RCS thrusters, but sometimes he gets a little confused. So, as you can see, we're drawing two of these tanks first. Actually, what I should have done, so now I can just get across and done some of these. Yeah, I'm not going to bother at this point, but uh, if you disable cross speed or clampatrons, save the full tank of fuel here and cause it to drop on the others first. I recommend doing it in pairs, so you can disable cross speed in these two. Which are, yeah, in these two. And enable it in these two to drop on these tanks to have to first. Bring in cross speed before you burn out the booster. You can have to these two. So that we can get as soon as as you can. And that's what we'll do when we actually take this to the planet, which we'll do eventually. Um, we're going to put a different booster on it. So we can put some more different fuel tanks on here. Um, or go around. And that'll be almost a good one. So I hope this was informative for you. So uh, we've still got plenty of fuel here to complete this. Uh, Circulars at 96, a little bit lower than I initially planned, but I'm okay with that because we've got our KSS at 101, not only too close to it, but still at that's a percent. See, we're stabilized with a circular rate of 95 kilometers, and we still have enough maneuvering fuel that we can uh, move about as necessary. And that, uh, this hyperstage booster station yeah, hyperstation booster I'm going to rename it to hyperstation now that it's in orbit but uh, I had it named as booster after but uh, you can see this debris is going to actually impact the planet and not stab in space so uh, my early <laughs> just just like in the real world my, my early uh, space program a lot of debris lying around and I'm now trying to clean up my act and uh, hopefully that happened actually invented uh, a special rocket that can take a different guy out of it. So, uh, now that we're in space, we're in orbit, we'll go ahead and extend our solar panels. So we got plenty of power. Um, I've put a ton of heavy batteries here in the middle. I figure that if we're going overboard on a way down, we might as well a little bit extra in the floor. And uh, you'll find that accessorize the shit out of this station. You won't go over the weight. Uh, the main thing is uh, keep it below. Uh, keep it below around 50 tons. You should be okay. If you keep it below 50 tons, you can get into orbit with a booster like that. And uh, make sure that um, uh, the, the fuel weight ratio is a little bit high uh, in my case, I think. So there's still still room for improvement. You could you could find a way if you really wanted to spend some time in the editor um, and further fine tune the staging to make it as efficient as possible. Um, that said. Uh, I picked the design I did because it's very robust and it's less likely to break maneuvering of it, which uh, is a very big concern when you're dealing with uh, something of this size. Got our fancy station. I probably should put a couple of uh, satellite dishes or something on there. Maybe I'll do that in the future for. Speaking of which, um, part of the initial plan, the reason for the module ability here, and uh, what I plan to do with it eventually, is uh, convert it to a lander. So I, I built it with that in mind that I could easily convert this into a lander by adding landing struts here and uh, adding some uh, retrograde boosters uh, up near the top uh, to help slow it down and uh, parachutes. But, uh, basically, Got to let go of those mounts. Um, basically, once uh, if, if we're using parachutes, uh, 
it should be pretty easy to land this on any other planet using the break. Uh, as long as it has an atmosphere. And if the atmosphere is thick enough, uh, you can use some retrograde landing on it and block that your energy zero break. Because there's just no way to carry enough fuel to land it uh, once you, you change uh, the transfer to that a little bit. So. But that said, I mean, it's pretty impressive that you need something this size in space. Potentially good with it. So, I'm going to tinker with it. Uh, start, start planning for uh, future missions to other planets, and uh, we're going to put an atomic motor on it next time. And, uh, we'll put one in orbit at uh, 70 kilometers and rendezvous uh, fuel tanks with it. Probably one at a time, maybe two at a time. that. We have to go this way anyway. Hope you enjoyed watching. I know I'm a bit talkative, but uh, try to be informative in case you have questions. Uh, you can respond to comments and I'll try to get to you, although I don't. I don't YouTube comments very often, so be nice. <laughs>